Hey, mom. What's your type? I'm... I'm married. It doesn't mean you don't have a type. Well, most of the guys I've dated had, uh, dark hair and blue eyes. Hmm. Cool. When I was in elementary school, my teachers every single year would ask us to write on a single piece of paper what our dream career was, you know, what we wanted to do when we grew up. Because asking a pack of five-year-olds to decide what they want to do with their adult life and they can barely read is a perfectly logical thing to do, right? I remember writing that I wanted to be a veterinarian because I loved animals. What they didn't know is that my real goal was to get impregnated by Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. Ah? Was that? Prince Eric has dark hair and blue eyes, which is my mom's exact type. Wow, I wonder if that was hereditary. But if your type is something you can pass down the bloodline, then here's 16 reasons why I'm never having children. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. But wait, 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 wait. Before we get into those 16 reasons, I think setting the foundation of my taste is very important. Totally not an excuse for me to just to continue talking about myself. <laughs> so what kinds of characters was little old Lethe fallen for before she became an adult? Well, first we have Prince Eric, as I mentioned before. Then we have Prince Philip. N no, not that one. Then we have the Beast. Then we have Prince Charming. Then we have the Prince. I grew up in Disney princess movies and baby Einstein. Give me a break. Uh, and then we have... Then we have, oh, what, what's that? Uh, is that anime? Yeah, unsurprisingly, at some point I started watching anime. So who was the lucky character I fell for first? Welcome, beauties, to the Oral Host Club. Did I, did I sound like him? Wow, who is surprised that the girl who likes seven princes likes the princely one from Oran High School Host Club? What appealed to me about Tamaki is that he's arrogant, stupid, and charming all in one bite, and every single bad quality about him only amplifies his charm. And not to mention, he's just a beautiful anime boy who aims to make girls happy, and that in turn made me really happy when I watched Oran for the first time nearly ten years ago. It's funny to say that some shoujo anime from almost two decades ago changed the course of my life forever, but it really did, and Tamaki's a big reason why. I'm thankful he exists. Wow, that, that got unexpectedly deep. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that much time to spend on the rest of the list, so uh, we gotta speed things up a little bit. Alright, let's go! Yuki Soma from the original Fruits Basket! I love Rap Boy with all of my heart and I still do! Sailor Jupiter! She's the reason I wore shitty rose earrings and clears every single day in 8th grade! Tomoe from Kami Sama Kiss! Hot fox boy who can cook, wears eyeliner, and sometimes has long hair! Really cool! Oikawa! I discovered Times Reader fanfiction on DeviantArt and thought he was sweet and humble! And then I actually watched Haikyuu in 2019! Makoto from Free! An actual sweet and humble guy! Urza from Fairy Tale! I like boobs! Alright! That's the last of the list! Ah! <sighs> time to move on! What? What's that? Joker from Persona 5! You need proper punishment. You need proper punishment. You need proper punishment. Okay, foundation set. Now let's get to the meat of the video. Now what's the first thing you think of when you hear the sentence, hottest anime characters ever? Well, first of all, you shouldn't think of anything because that's not a sentence, it's a fragment. <laughs> Ah, yes, the subscribe button is right there. Thank you, thank you. But let's get back to that fragment. I bet you think of some of these faces. And and yeah, they're hot, but that that's all I really have to say about them. I know it's probably disappointing. I know that these are probably a lot of the characters you expected me to go in detail on, but I don't know. It feels like beating a dead horse to say that Goju Satsuru is hot for the millionth time. We all know that by now. Okay, well that's my last tangent, so now I think we're ready to finally get to the real meat of the video. Number 1 Based on how my life is going, I'm probably going to die alone. But it's okay, I'm okay with that. Because I'm never truly alone. I have two Polaroids of my favorite anime boy in my phone case. Oh, and I guess I have my friends and family too. Mystic Messenger is unfortunately a game I fell head over heels for in 2016, to the point that I still play it every single year to this day. And every single time that I do, Zen comes out as the undisputed champion from my heart. Are there other routes that are much spicier and more meaningful than Zen's? Of course there are. But who else is gonna brag about how great he is before giving you a bouquet of roses? Did I just say bouquet? <laughs> 
before giving you a bouquet of roses and telling you how much you mean to him. Okay, well I guess there are other anime boys that will do that. Number two. I've always been told that I'll find the right one someday. That one day, I'll meet someone who I never want to spend a second away from. But as the years go by, I find that I don't believe it. Love just doesn't feel real to me. And I don't think it ever... Holy shit. Elliot is the reason I started frantically googling how to marry villagers in Stardew Valley. I've never really believed in love at first sight, but man, if that first time I met him on the beaches of Stardew Valley wasn't love at first sight, I don't know what is. Elliot is a beautiful, beautiful man, and I just adore how passionate he is. I mean, the guy lives all alone on the beach to devote himself to his writing. He and Leah have exactly the life that I want as an artist. I'm so jealous! I've had a total of four farms since I started playing, and while every single time I tell myself to go for another villager to experience their romance route without going full Persona 5 Valentine's Day on my farm, I can't help but go for Elliot. It's practically second nature for me to set up a bunch of crab traps on the beach in hopes of catching a lobster for my king at this point. Ah, <sighs> that's love. Number three. The story of how I came to watch Ghost Hunt shows perfectly how simple-minded I can be. I was just scrolling through the shoujo category on my anime list, and then I came across this show, skimmed the summary, said, eh, yeah, sure, and stuck it straight into my plan to watch list. Then two months later, I started watching it out of boredom, and I loved it. It's nothing spectacular, I'm not gonna claim it is, but I fell for the characters so hard that I could watch them play, I don't know, golf and have a blast. And that's true, the characters are great. The way that they interact with one another, and the way that they just become such great friends and rivals. The way that they, they bicker with one another, but at the same time have each other's back. It's just beautiful. I'm such a sucker for that shit. And my favorite character in particular turned out to be the monk. I thought he was funny, and I really liked the dynamic he had with the main character. God, I wish I was her goddess for sure. <laughs> God, I wish I was her. Uh, and apparently his name is uh, Tokigawa Hosho. I, I, I didn't know that. I watched the anime on anime website, and the subtitles would just refuse to call him by his real name, so I only know him as the monk from that one ghost hunting anime. But yeah, he's hot. I like it. 10 out of 10. Number 4. Shout out to my roommates who asked me to include Stein! <laughs> I've been rewatching Soul Eater with them lately, and without taking too much of your time, allow me to reenact what it sounds like every single time Stein came on screen. <laughs> Number five. I don't really have a lot to say about Ito. I've never played a second of Genshin Impact, and I probably never will. But every time fan art of him comes on my Twitter timeline, I have to stop myself from succumbing to the urge of downloading the game just to see his sweet, sweet, um. <clears throat> personality. No, but really, he's wonderful! I mean, first of all, he's voiced by Max Middleman in the English version, which, you know, that immediately scores points with me. <laughs> but also, Ito beatboxes happy birthday to you. Isn't that just the sweetest thing ever? God, I wish somebody would do that for me. Number six. I don't have a lot to say about Noe. I didn't finish Vanny. Vanny. V Van Vanitas? Vani I didn't finish the anime, I'm sorry. I've, uh, what I can tell you is that there's this one episode and he... Number seven. I'm sure some of you are questioning my taste right now because, oh boy, he's a bald guy. Oh no, he's shiny little head. But for those of you who have seen Nana, I'm sure you understand exactly where I'm coming from. I love how Yasu looks out for his friends, and although it's kind of to a fault, he always has other people's interests at heart, especially Nana Osaki's, and that really touched my heart. Not a lot of people are like that, and it's just really sweet to see. He's also a lawyer, which means he has money. <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> Roy Mustang! <laughs> Roy Mustang's the kind of guy where you have to say his full name every single time you want to refer to him. He's not Roy, he's not Mustang, he's Roy Mustang, and you have to say that with the utmost respect. God, I love him. You expect him to be this uptight mentor figure for Ed and Al, and while he is to a degree, he's just such a weird guy. I mean, tiny miniskirts? 
his uselessness when it rains. He subverts expectations the best way possible, but still manages to be so hot. Literally. <laughs> thank you, thank you. The like button's also right below the subscribe button. <laughs> what? Did did you think I was gonna move on for talking about the queen herself? I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't keep this iconic couple together in the listing. Risa Hawkeye and Roy Mustaine are my absolute favorite characters in the whole show, but I think Risa takes the cake for my true favorite. She doesn't have any powers in particular, unlike a lot of the characters on the battlefield, but she truly holds her own and proves that she can kick ass with just a handgun and her strength alone. She's smart, she's cool, I both want to be her and be with her. I mean, can you blame me? You've seen her with that dog? <clears throat> I just gave all the 12 year olds watching this, this incentive to call me a bottom, didn't I? Number 9 This one also goes out to my roommates And yep, I'm sure you can guess what it sounded like every time he came on screen when I watched Psychopaths with him <laughs> Number 10 In my head, Hori Mia ends with me becoming Hori's stepmom because goddamn there's a stupid dad hot I wasn't a DILF believer until now Number 11 I don't think Joker realizes how lucky he is to be interrogated by the one and only Sai Nijima. I think I'd call her Molly if she asked me to. Please don't call me a bottom in the comments. Number 12. Mob Psycho 100 is an anime that meant the whole world to me. Mob's story of trying to fit in with his peers and be a normal boy despite his unusual powers was something that really resonated with me. I mean, obviously, you can probably tell I'm a fucking loser in real life. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Mob, who is that? Wait, no, 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 put the camera back on and- HOLY SHIT! Yeah, I think this is truly where my taste starts to take a turn. I mean, a fucking con man who isn't even that attractive? And yeah, that's a good point, but... For some reason, he's just... I mean, I I was never into the once alert as peak, but like... I, I think what I'm feeling right now is... Similar to how people felt about the one slur in 2013, or like, Sans. Yeah, the funny skeleton from Undertale. Yeah, I think that's what we'll go with. Reagan is my Sans Undertale, and I adore him with all of my heart. Number 13. Oh. Oh. I see we reached this point in the video. I have so many thoughts about Boys Over Flowers as a franchise that it could be its own separate video. Well, we don't have that kind of time on our hands. I mean, this video is already however long it is at this point. Probably too long. <laughs> so I don't have the 40 minutes needed to spend telling you why I think Boys Over Flowers is a piece of modern art. So instead, I'll condense it down to five seconds. <laughs> <sighs> that felt good. To be serious though, I've seen around 5 adaptations of Boys Over Flowers, and Domyoji has just never really been my cup of tea. I hated him in Meteor Garden 2019, I minorly disliked him in the 2009 K-drama and the 1995 anime, and I don't know, it's just never really been my thing. So when I got bored one day and decided to give the 2005 Japanese drama a shot, my hopes weren't really high. And then there he was, Matsumoto Jun as Domyoji appeared. There's a screenshot of my first time seeing him. Yeah, he's beautiful. I get it now. I get why Domyoji's the male lead. It all feels so clear. It's no wonder Matsumoto Jun won Man of the Year in 2008 for this role. Damn, I'm at a loss for words. Number 14. Oh, oh. Okay, 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 okay. I can explain. Calm down. I don't even know how to pronounce this anime's title. I think it's Italian. I'm not really sure. But this was something I found around the same time I finished watching Ghost Hunt. I felt sad. I felt alone. I needed something to fill that ghost hunt shaped hole in my heart. Then I found an anime about a girl who works at a restaurant full of gilfs. Yeah, you heard me right. Gilfs. With a G. Grandpas I want to fuck. Fuckable old men with glasses. I'm not kidding, they all wear glasses. Every single one of them, it's crazy. I realize this does nothing to clear up the facts that I just said I want to fuck a widowed old man. Number 15. I can't defend this. I, I seriously, I've been defeated by myself. It was a moment of weakness. I'm sorry. I've had a severe and continuous- <laughs> Just fucking kidding. <laughs> 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 
Bear in the Cat has his appeals. He has his charms. Yeah, yeah, so he's a fucking cat. He gives a fucking shit. I sure as hell don't. I mean, the fuck is fucking simple. He's a dapper man in a dapper suit. He's princely. He has your best interests at heart. Holy fuck, that scene where he carries the main girl? <laughs> yeah, I'd fall in love too if I were her. He's a fucking cat. Who cares? You want to call me a furry? You're the same fuckers who want to fuck Willow Bunny and that bitch from the Goofy movie. I bet some of you even had the hots for fucking Nala too. Yeah, that's a lion, buddy. So shut the fuck up and leave me be. If I were in this movie, we would have ended so differently. I would have turned into a goddamn cat and married Baron. Oh my god. And here we have our final entry. 16 characters, as promised. It's been a rocky road full of highs and lows, all to get to this point. But you made it, and I'm proud of you. Not a lot of people can do that. Once I say the next number, you'll find out who finishes this list off. We'll have to say goodbye. But it's okay. We'll see each other again. Let's go find out who could be at the end of this list. Oh, what the fuck? Rest of my